Well, as we've been telling you all morning, Juneteenth is very close to becoming a federal holiday as a bill that would make it so is now heading to President Biden's desk. And new this morning, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi held a photo op in signing after that bill cleared the House. So it's now going to be sent to President Biden's desk for his signature. He is expected to sign it into law. Congress passed the Emancipation Act in 1862 to free the slaves here in the District of Columbia. Abraham Lincoln sat down and wrote the Emancipation Proclamation to be effective January 1, 1863. But because of a lack of communication, it was not until June 19, 1865 that the word got to Texas. If we learn, as I said yesterday, the art and value of communication, we will save a whole lot of hardship. It is uh, odd to think that it took essentially two years in an era where we live in now with instant communication for that word to get through. But of course, uh, the Union Army had to come in and enforce its will to make sure that it could make it all the way to the westernmost of the Confederate states and all the way to Galveston, Texas, is where that uh, announcement was made on June 19th. So again, the bill has cleared the House and Senate. It is headed to the president's desk where he is expected to sign it. And at this point, we will just assume for the purposes of conversation that he will. And we want to continue that conversation now. And joining me to talk more about this, State Rep Brandon McGee. Brandon, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. How are you? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And I am doing extremely well now that uh, we could rest a little from our 2021 legislative session. So I'm um, <laughs> I'm feeling a little good. Yeah, I can imagine. It's been a long haul, as it always does seem to be with those legislative sessions. Uh, why don't you just start by telling, uh, telling us what Juneteenth, and now that it's on the precipice of being a, uh, a federal holiday, what this means for you? Yeah, yeah. And first of all, I, I really appreciate you and Fox 61 for allowing me this opportunity to just talk a little bit more on the importance of Black Independence Day, better known as Juneteenth. Uh, you know, I surmise Juneteenth as asking us um, as a nation uh, to consider the promises of freedom that have not yet been fulfilled in the United States. Uh, so among these Juneteenth celebrations, um, I know of many black and brown and, and white allies, uh, people continue to strategize on how to equally include uh, many black and brown folks in the American political process. Uh, so I am extremely um, excited about what just took place on the federal level. Uh, but I also know here in the, in the great state of Connecticut in 2003, Connecticut General Assembly approved a bill that was signed into law to designate the Saturday closest to June 19th of each year uh, to be Juneteenth. Independence Day. Uh, and I've also been honored to work alongside many of my colleagues to establish um, House bill, I want to say it was 6209, that aimed to recognize Juneteenth Independence Day as a legal holiday here in the state of Connecticut. Yeah, that answer leads me into the next question. It's a very interesting position to be in because by no means is Juneteenth new, but from a federal perspective into the eyes of a lot of people, this is new, which gives you a very rare chance to try to form what you think Juneteenth should be. I mean, for other holidays, like, say, Memorial Day, there's a solemn component to it, but there's also a celebratory component to it. Would you like to see this be a celebratory day, more of a call to action, as you were alluding to before? How would you like the, the tone of Juneteenth to be for all Americans going forward? Thank you. You know, in 1968, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. planned a Juneteenth celebration uh, to address poverty, and freedom among black and brown people, which initiated the Poor People's March uh, there in Memphis, Tennessee, to demonstrate. It was a demonstration about economic justice. Uh, and so in saying that, I believe, and this is just my perspective, there should be a sense of solemn, uh, a solemn tone uh, to the holiday, but also a celebration of the many milestones that black and brown people have made uh, throughout uh, time. Uh, it's also an opportunity to engage with our white allies and also to educate the broader community on the black experience with respect to it's just beyond slavery. It's, it's, it's a little bigger than that, but we don't want to forget the sacrifices many black people uh, have made. Uh, so I would say it's a little bit of both and. 
Yeah, a little bit of looking back, but also looking forward as well. Uh, just curious about the legislation, by the way. 14 Republicans did vote against the bill. Uh, Thomas Massey, representative of Kentucky, uh, had argued at the time that referring to Juneteenth as a national Independence Day would confuse people. But it sounds like uh, y y you wanted to look at it as black Independence Day. Do you think that it, that's the appropriate wording? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to get into the semantics, but just like we celebrate July 4th, we celebrate Memorial Day and every other holiday that we have, Columbus Day, that's another conversation. Um, I, I think, again, this is an opportunity not to divide our country, but to uh, allow many of our folks to understand the importance of the Black experience, the, the diaspora, uh, and to also include this type of education in our school system. Them. Many members of the Black and Puerto Rican caucus and, and of the General Assembly fought really hard for Black or African American studies alongside Latino studies so that all of our children can understand the importance of, of different experiences. So, you know, it really just it sounds the alarm on the importance of, of the Black experience and the contributions um, we have made. And uh, you had sort of alluded to this before, but you know, right or wrong, this is still very new to the consciousness of a, a lot of white people and people who want to be allies. Uh, what are some small steps they can do to, uh, you know, I, I know it's a very vague question, but small steps they can do to start understanding what Juneteenth should mean to them? That's right. You know, um, 2020 really showed us um, the the power of all of our communities coming together around um, a particular call to action. Um, I had many of my white colleagues and some of my closest friends who happen to be white say, look, I really don't know what to do. Can you help me? Now, there's two responses to that. Black folks are really tired, right? And having to explain what many uh, of our people know is right to do, whether it's policy, whether it's in our education system, you name it. But the other response is, let me educate you as a Black person around my experiences on how organizations could do or step up to the job and do more, on how our government can do more, uh, and just to name a couple. Uh, but, but small steps, listen, 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 not to respond, but listen to better understand how you can help many of the black and brown people uh, around um, uh, specific issues. But again, Juneteenth is an opportunity to all be aware and to educate, but it's also not a day off but a day on. Uh, and we talk a lot about that during Martin Luther King uh, holiday and the importance of civil rights and civil justice. Representative McGee, thank you for taking the time. By the way, you have a very good memory. I did a little Googling while you're talking. It was House Bill 6209. You had oh, really? Oh, man, yeah. that's pretty That's pretty cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> my my you, pleasure. You, I wanted to give you listen, credit for if you it. Asked, if you asked me that two months from today, I probably would have messed that one up. But I appreciate that. That's all right. It's already in the books. You got, Like you said, you got to keep looking forward. So thank you for taking the time to join us. We do appreciate it. And Take care. And remember, the conversation's not done. Tonight at 6 p.m., we're inviting you to join all of us here at Fox 61 as we commemorate Juneteenth and keep the conversation going about what it means and what it should mean going forward.